Christy. Yes. Christy. Yes. You hurt my feelings. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't mean to. Uh, You know what you did. (laughs) This is a really great movie. It's called You Hurt My Feelings. This is the latest from Nicole Hall of Center. So, of course, whenever she does a film, we will always talk about it here. Um, We'd love to have you subscribe if you have not yet. It is a summer of big blockbusters and noisy stuff, but we will always find the, the cool, smaller art house fair for you. So come and hang out with us. We'd love to see you. He's been lying to me this whole time. I wasn't lying. I was encouraging. That's not true. You were lying to be encouraging. This is uh, Nicole Hall Center once again displaying just an impeccable ear for dialogue. You know, the things that people say, the things we wish we'd said, the (laughs) things we'd like to take back, (laughs) all the above. And they all come together in her latest film, You Hurt My Feelings. Julia Louis-Dreyfus stars as a novelist and a professor at the New School in New York City. And she has made a name for herself with her memoir, but now she's written a fiction book and she's waiting to hear back from her agent about it. And she's very anxious about it. It's, you know, it's a vulnerable thing. And she's just twisting and wondering what's happening. One day she overhears her husband, who's a therapist, played by Tobias Menzies. She overhears him saying that her new book is terrible. And she's re- he read like 20 drafts of it. And it's just not getting any better. And he doesn't know how to tell her. And she's understandably so crushed and just devastated because he's been telling her all along how much he likes it right right he's he's not been truthful with her of course and so it's this really like smart and sharp and observant exploration of like the little lies we tell each other right and why like what harm could it do it's just easier you know we we all do it all the time you know maybe supportive a friend has made dinner for you or you get a gift and you're like oh it's great or like your butt doesn't look big in those jeans you look great (laughs) and so it's all about the lies we tell each other in the name of kindness and trying to be supportive and maybe just wanting to avoid the awkwardness of confrontation there's a whole bunch of reasons and um it's just, it's so funny and so true, like so many of her films are, but really this is like her, her best movie in a while, I would say. And she reteams her with Julia Louis-Dreyfus and they worked together, of course, a decade ago on Enough Said, which was, I think it was not, if not the last, one of the last James Gandolfini films. Yeah. And she brings out in Julia Louis-Dreyfus like this vulnerability and this dramatic side that we really don't ever see anywhere else. Like they're really on one another's wavelength. Yeah. And uh, you you really feel the raw emotion of how crushed she is when, you know, the man she's loved that she's trusted for decades, like everything gets upended and she doesn't know how to exist in the world anymore. It feels like a, a very small kind of specific intimate story, but the themes she explores here are so universal and so relatable. And it's this like murderer's row of supporting players from Michaela Watkins to Aria Moyed to Jeannie Berlin to various other people who have been on succession at some point or another. <laughs> um, it's great. It's really, really great. David Cross and Amber Tamblyn. Oh, yeah, a... t- t- do that. Explain <laughs> that part. That part's great. So there are a couple that are uh, that are clients of Tobias Menzies as a therapist, and the more that they go, the less they feel like they're getting out of it, and and, and it, it, which goes in a very funny way that I won't give away. But yeah, this movie I think really hits upon again, like it, it, it's this very specific set of circumstances, but that you can extrapolate that almost anybody can relate to. If you're mm-hmm. in a relationship, there is the potential to be lying about something for all the right reasons, for all the kindest reasons, you know, like Dave and I went and saw this last night and he's like, mm-hmm. I always tell you when I hate what you've written. I'm like, yes, you do. And I appreciate that. You know, he's a very tough editor and and that's, that's a good thing for me. Uh, so I know he's never held back. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that it, it just kind of touches upon the way of like, How much, how much, how honest is too honest? And like, at what point do you just sort of acknowledge things and, and, and decide, you know what, Uh, let's stop lying to each other about this, that, or the other thing. And let's just sort of, you know, move forward in a way for a while there, like Hall of Center's films were coming out, you know, with like big gaps between them. And she would like seven years. Yeah. She'd Hmm. be doing TV or stuff. And I was like, in a just world, like there would be an annual Nicole Hall of Center movie, the way like a, <laughs> an annual Woody Allen movie. You know, yeah. she is so smart and so observant and empathetic. And I just I love her films so much. They don't sound like anybody else's movies. They don't move like anybody else's movies. And they and, and as much as they're about like 
intellectual New Yorkers, generally speaking, like they are about these themes that are very relatable and, and they're very funny. Yeah, I, I, I do also see the Woody Allen comparison in that it occupies this kind of rarefied intellectual, like literary artsy yeah. nook of New York City, you know, like public radio tote bags, you know, that, that kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. And it's very specific, but I feel like there's a, a kindness at the heart of her films yeah. that does not exist in Woody Allen's films. It's, it's not mocking of these people. It's like wanting to explore their deep, relatable truths. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think even like in a movie like Please Give, for example, where it's like, let's talk about where people's compassion can still like get them into trouble or still be sort of selfish at the heart of it. But it never feels like she's out to get anybody. It just sort of feels like she's out to kind of expose these layers of humanity that mm -hmm. the people have and that we can all relate to and, and we can share that way and, and that's why i think what makes her movie so terrific it's a great conversation movie it'd be a great date movie right because mm, yeah. the the go have coffee afterward go have dinner afterward and you know you could talk about this endlessly and we can all tell ourselves like oh i'd want the brutal honesty <laughs> you know but being creative is such a vulnerable place to be this also explores that notion where like you put yourself out there you make yourself so vulnerable whether you're a writer you're an actor whatever it is you're doing michaela watkins is an interior designer there's a whole running subplot mm -hmm. with her and one of her clients is very funny and taps into that same idea of like is it a good idea to be honest it explores different kinds of conversations and like being too blunt like the david cross and amber tamlin characters is probably not the right answer right being passive aggressive like Jeannie berlin who plays their mom is not the good answer like somewhere in the middle of it is but seeing how everyone exists in these different realms um is endlessly funny yeah. And sad. And, and I, th I think if there's anything that's sort of specific about it that, that has to do with being a, a creative person, it's that it's hard to not take criticism of your creation like criticism of you. You know, and so when, you know, if you're an, if you're a memoirist or a novelist and you're, you're having this thing that's so personal and mm -hmm. th that's so close to, to your heart and your soul, you know, and people, tell you it sucks or or people have you know like start picking at it, it it's hard to not feel like they're picking at you you know and 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 certainly for the actors i'd say it's very much the same thing um you know and and so yeah it, it does become that that kind of conversation like i love at one point you know the, the the husband says like you know you always tell me i'm a great therapist just yes he goes how would you know <laughs> <laughs> Right. We, we we want the best for people that we love. Right. Exactly. So anyway, this is excellent. I'm saying nine. Uh, nine point two. Yeah, this is yeah. definitely a, a best of the year contender for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah and it's it's a 24. So hopefully it will get to where you are. And if not now soon. Uh, but yeah, look for it. It's really terrific. If anything, it's too short. I, oh, I, please, that could have been this could have been an eight episode series. With right. These characters. <laughs> I would love to spend that kind of time with them. Enjoy.